Hi guys and welcome to Christmas in Iceland and of course right on cue we got some uh, hail or or sludge so yeah it's gonna be snowy a little bit a little bit of snow here in Reykjavik uh, a little bit you see uh, there's a little bit of snow here on the side and of course it usually goes away really quickly and uh, let's switch hi guys hi there so yeah of course right on cue a little bit of sludge so maybe you'll get a uh, little rain drops and stuff oh hi buddy hello <laughs> and merry catmas this is the christmas cat oh yes what's the name this is buta buta bardason buta bardason yeah i'm Bardi and I do the cat tours and uh, actually it was my invention <laughs> and my boss agreed to it of course and um, I tell you a lot of cat stories from mythology and religion and we go to the cat cafe together okay and this is Buddha yes he's here in front of the church he's sometimes in the church actually well Thank you very much, my friends, and have a lovely cat mass. Can I ask you, uh, Farde, how, how do you celebrate Christmas with the uh, cats? How is the, how is the cat mass? Uh, oh, the cat mass. Oh, just a moment. Oh, <laughs> it's the weather. Yes. Oh, we celebrate the cat mass. We just take up the Christmas presents together. Oh, yes. And, uh, and uh, we have something good to eat. There are actually two more in the family. Okay. And they are Magdalena and Lucas. Yeah. And um, yes, we celebrate Christmas together, of course. Nice. And we sing and we play the music with Siguros. That's very cat friendly music. Siguros. Wow. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, good to see you all. Mm. Thank, mm. thank you for, for uh, saying hi to, the, to uh, Amparo, Rachel, Sara. Uh, have, yeah, very difficult. Uh, hello from Rome. Okay. Ayla, uh, there's a lot of people joining in for the stream today, and uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be walking through the Christmas list streets of Reykjavik and talking about the Icelandic Christmas traditions. Yeah. Okay. T are you telling them about the Christmas cat? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. I'll show the Christmas okay. cat later on. Okay. Take so, care. See ya. Cheers. Bye. Bye. So yeah, that was party. My. My chief guide of your friend in Reykjavik, uh, we do all kinds of uh, walking tours and experiences in Reykjavik, uh, food tours, city walks, beer tours, uh, architecture, city walks, what you name it, and then we do private tours out of Reykjavik, like the classic golden circle, but also all kinds of uh, transfers and tours and such, so uh, if, you, if you ever have the opportunity of visiting us, then please look up your friend in Reykjavik. But yeah, we're gonna be walking through the Christmas lit streets, so uh, so let's uh, start. And hi Debbie, hi Malo Molly, and uh, Monica, and Dawn. As you see, there's a uh, there's some Christmas ornaments all around, and we are just looking at the. Famous landmark of of Reykjavik called Hallgrimskirkja Church. If you see any any pictures from Reykjavik, it's usually featuring this. And of course, Leif the Lucky, the founder of America, long before Christopher Columbus ever did. He's there in the front. But yeah, let's uh, let's uh, take a walk down to. Uh, downtown so yes uh, I'm gonna cross here thank you as you see there's a little bit of snowfall here in the corners but of course like usually here in in Reykjavik the snow quickly melts away it's more there's more snow to the north actually but sometimes it keeps, so we call it white Christmas, of course, when it's snowing, and red Christmas when it's when it uh, when it uh, 
when it's not, when it's just uh, sludge and stuff. But yeah, we are here in the pagan district. And what do you mean by pagan district or Norse mythology district? I, that's more, more, uh, more like it. Uh, we have here streets like Odin's Street, Tis Street, Tiskata, Forskata, uh, and so forth. So th those are named after the old Norse gods. And, uh, and of course, as you possibly know, some of the weekdays come from come from these Norse gods, like. Wednesday is another name for Odin. And Tuesday, Tiskata, Tuesday is, is another name for Tyr, the Norse god of, of war. And Thursday is named after Thor. So yeah, some of the weekdays are after the Norse gods. But then we have, of course, Moon, Sun and Saturn. And Frey, Friday, of course, Freya, the Friday. So hi Swava, hi Karen, hi John. Nice to see you guys. It's been a been a long time since 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 the last live stream. Uh, yeah, been been uh, a lot of things going on. Of course, busy running tours and. In Reykjavik and uh, and uh, creating new experiences for people, but um, but yeah, no excuse for not being alive more often. Hi, Carol and Alexandro from Padova. So yeah, we're going to be talking about the Christmas traditions of Iceland. We're talking, you know, Christmas food, the Icelandic. Yulelads or or uh, Sanas. We're gonna talk about uh, Christmas drinks, uh, the Christmas notorious Christmas cat, and of course Grill and Lepaludi. You can maybe see actually Lepaludi over here in the window. Do you see the troll here? That's Lapaludi, the lazy husband of Grilla, the monster's troll that's the mother of the Icelandic Sanas. Lapaludi. Repeat that three times. Lapaludi. And uh, so, yeah, but I have a guest here, one of my guides called Oli. Hi, Oli, I'm gonna clip off my. Mike here. Okay. Hi, Oli. Hi, Valur. Have it here in the middle, so we have, a, yeah. have it up between us, so okay. we can go so here. Everybody can hear me as yeah. well. So, how are your Christmas traditions? I know that you sing a lot. I do sing a lot. Um, I'm a member of three different choirs, okay. and uh, the biggest one actually had four Christmas concerts in the big church up on the hill last week. Okay. And that's what's, what's uh, the name of the choir? That's the uh, Reykjavik Male Voice Choir. Okay. And then I'm also a member of the opera choir and a small chamber choir. Okay. So, and they all decided to give Christmas concerts this year. So, I sang seven concerts in ten days. Okay. <laughs> and uh, now I'm just singing for my guests on the tours. I just finished a, a Christmas walk okay. uh, where we talk about the Christmas traditions, like you're doing on this walk, and uh, and I give them an example of some Icelandic Christmas song. Like, so what's uh you know what's your favorite Christmas song? What you, uh, like a is it an Icelandic well, song or, or is it well, uh, yeah I I like the old Icelandic songs. Un unfortunately, most of the Icelandic Christmas songs today are uh, Christmas lyrics sang to uh, some Italian or Spanish or <laughs> French beach <laughs> uh, melodies. Yeah, yeah. But I li I like the the old ones and and. For example, the, those that also tell a bit of a story and give us an indication of how Christmas used to be back in the day in Iceland, like like when like when uh, uh, today the most common Christmas present would probably be a book, has been for for decades. Mm -hmm. But back in the day, 
people couldn't afford that and they didn't have many books. So uh, a candle would be the ideal Christmas present and uh, if you were uh, lucky enough you also got a, a deck of cards. Yeah. So and there is this one particular Christmas song that that uh, that that describes that, and that's a it's a simple one used by, by for kids. It says, "Brauden koma blessed jólin börnin far að lakka til allir fá þá eitt hvað fallegt í það minsta kert og spil." Kert og spil, kert og spil, í það minnsta kert og spil. Yep. Yep. This, one, this one goes, soon Christmas will arrive, everybody's looking forward to it. Uh, children will all get something nice, at least a candle and a deck of cards. Nice, nice Oli, thank you for having, uh, visiting us a little bit. Thank you, and us up. enjoy the tour. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. So, uh, hi Birgit and hi Liz and hi Marlene. Hi Glenda. So yeah, this was a very traditional thing back in the day to uh, to sing about or to give kids a candle because you know it, it was dark most many many farms and uh, a candle and a deck of cards that was a that was kind of like a very traditional gift you could at least get a candle and a deck of cards hi Joan hi Monica hi Audrey and Cindy nice to have you with us so yeah kerto spil kerti o spil But you have to learn something. Uh, you have to learn a saying here in Iceland that uh, is "Þetta rettast," and that's the motto of this walking tour. "Þetta rettast." "Þetta rettast." Everything will be okay in the end. We will overcome this hardship and figure out how to manage, how to overcome this. Uh, yeah, difficulty, or you know, if you're, if you're, uh, if you're, uh, you know, if you're late learning for the for the exams, you say that and you know, everything will come together in the end. And this is uh, like the motto of this walking tour: that I'm very late pre preparing for this tour. It's been a very busy season for me. So if uh, if we get disconnected, or if anything happens, if my gimbal, which is doesn't really handle the weight of the phone, uh, goes wonky, then that that you know I will I will figure it out and come back live or uh, or uh, or fix the gimbal. No, shit happens. <laughs> Sorry for my language. But yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna clip here. Try to clip the mic back on me. Birna, get the clip and set it down a bit. So yeah, that 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 we'll we'll figure out a way of, of uh, overcoming this. Hi Linda, enjoy the liquid. Hi Hans, it's been a while. Oh, nice manual. Last year during the Christmas tour, I wrote we would get married in Iceland. And we did 24th of August at Gluckafoss. Oh, nice, Manuel. Congratulations, you know, from me to you. Shelley, Merry Christmas. So it's a very Christmassy thing to uh, get books, like Ole mentioned earlier, to get books during Christmas. We call it, we call it the Christmas book craziness, Yola Boca Flood. Or the Christmas book flood. Uh, I'll I'll probably talk a little bit more about that later on. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm just if we can see him here. Do you see the Icelandic Santa here? That's uh 
here on the end of the house. This is the first sauna that arrives on the 12th of December. The first sauna or Julelat. Julelat, Jola Sveinar. Yeah, Stakja Stur. It's called Stakja Stur or Sheep Code Clod. And he arrives on the 12th of December. So the tradition is that uh, back in the day, these Icelandic Yule lads, they are the sons of trolls. So uh, of course they were a little bit rowdy back in the day. They were, you know, their names represent that. They were thieves, uh, they were stealing, they were harassing the, the sheep, they were harassing the uh, livestock, uh, they were stealing uh, food and, and stuff, but uh, but then they started to behave a little bit better uh, around 1930s and they started to give gifts to the children of Iceland. So now, uh, so the children used to, uh, started to bring their shoe in the windowsills and they would get little presents from each Santa. So from the 12th of December until the 24th of December, each Santa arrives from their cave, uh, tr uh, troll cave in the mountains and arrives to the to the habitat of the people and give, bring small gifts, uh, sometimes just a small treat or a small toy. And uh, so, yeah, that's a traditional thing. Uh, if the children misbehave, they get a moldy potato, a squishy potato. <laughs> uh, probably because we had a lot of potatoes back in the day. You know, that's one of the things, one of the few things that actually grows in. Uh, Here in the pretty cold landscape of, uh, of Iceland, so uh, so that was kind of like the, if you were naughty, you get a moldy potato. Yes. So yeah. Hi, Patricia. Two weeks return to arrive for New York's New Year's Eve. Oh, nice, nice. Hi, Dennis. And Monica, let it flow, let it flow. Exactly, we will figure things out. You know, worst case scenario. We will, we will, yeah, overcome this. Yeah, Rodney, fourth year, this is a tradition. Fourth year running. I started doing these live streams 2020. Uh, was I was been thinking about doing some kind of live streams in the middle of COVID. Everybody was in quarantine and things were miserable. No travel and tourism in Iceland. And and I was uh, uh, I was uh, you know debating if I should gain the courage of going li doing live streams. Uh, it wasn't until I finally got COVID myself uh, and was in quarantine for two weeks so that I decided yeah of course I will just go forth and then I planned the first Christmas live streams that was uh, in the middle of December 2020 so it was a way of uh, yeah introducing they were stuck Uh, stuck in quarantine or stuck because of COVID or yeah, it was pretty rough uh, and yeah, a way of bringing some Christmas cheer to to the to the world and yeah, it was yeah, it was kind of crazy. You can watch it actually on uh, Facebook and YouTube if you want. It's a bit stuttering and it was a bit technical, glitchy and you know, but that's <laughs> We are here in the Rainbow Street, on the Rainbow Street. So one of the most popular photo spots of the of Reykjavik, of course. As you can imagine, looks pretty nice to have Hatkinskiska Church in the background and the rainbow colors and yeah, it's a it's a nice photo shoot opportunity. One of my favorite coffee houses here in Reykjavik. We are crazy about coffee and we just had a little Jola Gluck or Christmas mulled wine before the tour. 
just to warm up a little bit. It's a pretty chilly, uh, but not too bad. It's, you know, we are at least, there's no wind, uh, or not a lot of wind at least. And uh, it could be worse, it could be hailing. And I'm not gonna jinx it, so maybe, maybe we'll have hail a little bit later. <clears throat> and hi Amy, and hi Ayla, again. Yeah, you can see uh, my niece Stainen is, is posting uh, our Facebook group where if you're if you're an Iceland file, Iceland <laughs> Iceland file, if you're uh, if you enjoy uh, getting news and information about Iceland, then maybe join our Facebook group. You know, we're crazy about ice cream in Iceland. We eat ice cream in any weather. If even though it's freezing, you can always eat a little ice cream. Yeah, and uh, then maybe you could also, if you want to join our our news or a mailing list, join our community there, get a little information about uh, regular information and and fun facts or things about Iceland and uh, in your mail, and then please sign up for that. We are going to give you a Christmas present on the 23rd, 4th of December. And here you can actually uh, see the Icelandic Sanas, because like I said, we have 13 of them. 13 Sanas over here. We call these kind of stores puffin stores, because uh, uh, puffin stores because yeah usually in uh, these kind of stores they have a lot of puffin puffin related memorabilia so yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna walk with you through the uh, a little bit of a Christmas market and uh, we try to we have a uh, yeah a couple of Christmas walking tours, uh, a regular Christmas walking tour, and then we have a Christmas food tour that we just launched. And then, uh, and then, uh, then of course our regular like food tours and, uh, and then uh, city walks, other city walks. <laughs> Hi Colleen, Colleen Puffin, is that your nickname? Colleen the Puffin or Colleen Puffin? Here is one of the places that we, of course, visit on our Christmas walking tour. Lichtla Yolo Budin or the little Christmas store. And uh, here we give them a, all kinds of this is open all year round and you can write a letter to the Icelandic Sanas. Like I said here, a letter to the Icelandic Yulilat. We have 13 Icelandic Sanas. Buy a letter from us and fill it out with the name of the person or you love and put it in the mailbox. Before Christmas a letter will arrive from the Yulilat and a small gift. Christmas greetings, Sana. It's a bit of a mixed bag here. 13 Yulilat, Sana. Yeah, it's a <laughs> they are, you know, is it a Yulad or is it a Sana? Coca-Cola Sana. And then of course we have here the uh, store that we also frequent called Taste of Iceland, which is like a, has all kinds of, uh, all kinds of, sorry, I'm fixing here, uh, all kinds of uh, food and stuff uh, from Iceland. And Birna. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, Birna? Is is our is the service and operations manager of your friend Reykjavik, and, uh, and she does all kinds of uh, all kinds of uh, uh, helps out our travelers with uh, with uh, with our trips. So, uh, what are you, what are your Christmas food traditions? You know, you, I know that you uh, bake a lot and you do a lot of food traditions. Uh, related to Christmas. What uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, hi everybody. Uh, sorry, it's a bit cold. Um, 
my food tradition or my family's food tradition is um, uh, smoked uh, glazed, ham. glazed ham and then I, I make um, we have um, caramelized potatoes green beans and uh, red cabbage which I prepare myself from an um, from a um, recipe for, through my mother. As far as baking, I'm not baking 12 sorts anymore like I used to. I do two. And one of them are kringles, no, kringle, kringles, uh, with, uh, uh, with um, uh, cumin in it. And then a sort of um, uh, um, it's like a cookie with, uh, which is more, more or less made out of butter, just butter. Okay. How about Sarah Bernard? Um, oh no, I, I've never been able to do it, I don't have the patience for it. Okay. <laughs> but I know that you also make um, a flatbread or a flat cookie? Yes. Uh, uh, bread? Yes. yes, I do. Um, uh, an old, very uh, traditional thing that we, our family do. Um, we, uh, this year I, I make about 40 of them. In the old days, we used to make like 150. Yeah. Well, uh, and then you also make, of course, cleaners. The yes. Icelandic dough. Well, I don't. The, it's not a tradition in my family. Uh, I make them just because um, they taste so damn good. Mm. <laughs> yeah, nice to uh, have a little of a peek. We will post some of the recipes, uh, maybe on our on our, our your friend Reykjavik page, but. Uh, like I said, also if you sign up for our uh, our community, our mail list, then uh, you'll get a little little nice surprise on the 24th of December. Anything last? Uh, do you want to say Merry Christmas to? Oh people? yes, Merry Christmas to you all, clearly all. So yes. Yeah, little little drop-ins by people to uh, uh, my guides and, and and people to have a a little bit more of an introduction of of, uh, of how we celebrate Christmas. And hi Eric, hi Christina, stay uh, in Christine, post that red cabbage recipe. Okay, we'll we'll. But yeah, let's uh, let's uh, check out our small Christmas market that's open. <laughs> It's open during the week ends uh, in December. Yes, the Christmas, uh, the little Christmas house in uh, near Akure is also open all year round. So this is uh, something that if, you, if you're visiting in the north of, if you're visiting in the north of uh, of, of of Iceland, then uh, then. Uh, a visit to the Christmas house in, in the north is, is a proper way of a uh, proper thing to do. Sorry, I'm just a little uh, disoriented. There's a lot of things going on here around me. People saying hi and <laughs> stuff like that. You know, it's been a while since I was here. Yeah. So yeah, we have a lot of Sanas. So on the 13th, we have Gulligok or Giljagur. And he liked to steal the milk from the, from the cows. So uh, that was his, uh, that was his naughty thing to do. And uh, like I said, all, usually these, these uh, Sanas were up to mischievous things. So on the 13th of December we have Gulligak or Giljagur. Giljagur. Then on the 14th of December we have Stubby or Stuvur. Stuvur the Stubby. Here we have the Lebowski bar. Here to the right, you can get a really nice white Russian over there. Nice coffee places here. 
Here we are in danger because of the loud Christmas music that Facebook could possibly cut us out because of copyright issues. Uh, hopefully, you know, I'm, I'm just gonna be a short. I'm gonna just gonna be a short while here, so because uh, yeah, I'm, I'm afraid that they, they will cut. They will cut me out if if the music is so oh a bit too long. But here we have some Christmas dolls. I'm a bit afraid. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's chance it. Let's chance it. See if. Uh, See if uh, Facebook will cut me down, cut, cut, cut us off, then I'll just simply come live again. Don't be afraid about that, I'm trying to talk as much as possible here, so, uh, so it uh, dampens up a little bit of the music. But yeah, uh, I've had that experience before that they cut us off uh, when I was doing a live stream because of copyrighted music. And these are all kinds of stalls here with all kinds of artifacts and... and uh, and Christmas memorabilia. Yes, Dana, please, uh, please drop, uh, Dana, my, uh, my niece. Uh, can you please post, uh, post a mailing list on our on our feed so people can check it out. On the fifteenth of December, we have spoon liquor, Tvörus Lekir. Spoon liquor. So this nice Eulalat really enjoyed to finding the the spoons that were used to prepare the Christmas foods, and uh, and for some reason people did not have washing machines back in the day, so the spoons were sometimes dirty, and he really liked they were like a lollipop lollipops for him. Spoon liquor, third liquor on the 15th of December. And here we have a really nice uh, photography studio called Mink. We did all the Viking photos for your friend in Reykjavik uh, on our website, so you can see here, for example, here's a photo of uh, of our group for. Uh, Stena, please put the link that I put earlier on the chat. You know, don't use this. The, the, the link, the bit.ly link. Okay? Yeah, here's a bar, Instuk bar. Uh, I really like their winter ale. That's, a, that's another story. We have a tradition of these Christmas beers. A lot of the small microbreweries of Iceland, they release a Christmas beer. We have uh, roughly 100 different types of Christmas beers that are only available during Christmas, during the Christmas period. The reason why that is, is, uh, is that we have state-run alcohol stores and if, 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 you, if you only have a If you have a, one of my guys was walking past and I was just like <laughs> trying to say, saying hi. Hi Suzanne, photos from Mink, uh, Margaret. Ich hoffe, ich komme den Jahr wiederkommen, ich suche können. Ich spreche Deutsch bisher, aber nicht so gut. Ah, Manuel is drinking Instuk Icelandic Doppelbock. Oh yeah, that's a really nice beer. So yeah, we're talking about Christmas traditions, and, and uh, yeah, the state-run alcohol stores—they have—they uh, run special promotions. If you have a seasonal beer that's only available during a, a select amount of time, you get top shelf space, you get uh, front shelf space. So, uh, so everybody and their and their grandmother releases. Uh, 
And this is one of the bars that we visit on our Icelandic craft beer tour or, or beer tour. It's called Session Craft Bar. Here it's on the top, on the second floor over here. Session Craft Bar. So uh, maybe I'll drop there later and and have a uh, one uh, nice Christmas beer. Uh, like I said, yeah, 100 different types of uh, Christmas beers being released every year. So uh, a lot of selection, and people are you know, sampling different Christmas beers and giving them ratings and reviews. And there's a competition for the best Christmas beer of the season. And uh, and so forth. Yeah, thank you, Sophia. Uh, exactly, Bitly. Uh, yeah, Grilla is not visible, fortunately. But we are. We we had arrived to the 15th of December. We and uh, now we have Pottaskevit, pot liquor. He was on the 16th of December, and yeah, he liked the old. Old uh, pots and likes to lick the whatever crumbs that were in the pots. Pot that's gave it. Pot liquor. And then on the 17th, we have Askas liquor or bowl liquor. Everybody back in the time they had their own separate bowls. Or dishes, so that was like uh, their dish, and and uh, you would use your dish again and again and again and again and again. And, again. and, um, and bowl liquor enjoyed his licking the bowls. Hi, Pats, and hi from Cape Cod. Don likes Session Bar. Yes, it's a wonderful place to visit Session. Session is a nice way of sampling some different Icelandic craft beers. And uh, beer was banned in Iceland for decades, from 1915 to 1979. So, uh, and it's a long story that we talk about on our on our. Uh, on, my, on our beer tour, of course, uh, but uh, but when it finally was uh, allowed, 1989, 1st of March, 1989, now we celebrate Beer Day every year on on the 1st of March. So uh, there's a celebration of the of the end of the prohibition, and uh, but it wasn't until like 2005, slowly after the. Uh, Shortly after the craft beer boom in the United States, when when uh, craft beer houses started to emerge from in uh, everywhere around uh, around Iceland, now we have us uh, like uh, I think about 30. This is the Punk Museum. It's a it's a public. It was once a public toilet, and then we have a gallery in the other public toilet that was the women's part of the. Of the and of course you see the of course you see Harpa concert hall here in the back where you can turn every any color uh, in the front they have uh, made flags and they have made computer games and uh, you know it's, it's a beautiful building and then we of course have the old prison over here where now appropriately we keep the Prime Minister of Iceland. Hi John, long time no see. And down here we have the Christmas cat. The monstrous Christmas cat. So the story was that if you don't get new clothes during Christmas, you know, 
the Christmas cat would would eat you. So everybody was happy that they get a little, uh, maybe a stocking or or um, or uh, uh, some sock or or some something that was knitted by their grandma or mother. So there was a happy thing. So a kind of way of uh, making sure that people or the kids were grateful for their for their soft packages. A lot of Icelandic parenting is about scare tactics. Dawn is saying that they get Instuk in Minnesota. Yeah, uh, Instuk beer is actually one of the few beers that you can actually get uh, uh, widely around the world. They have uh, they are at least in. Uh, I think 30 states in the U.S. and and uh, and also and also around the world, the Christmas cat. You all know the cat of Christmas. The cat was huge and fat. No one know where he came from. No or where he was at. He opened his glowering eyes wide, each like a burning gem. It wasn't for the faint of heart to face them. If he's still around, I know not, but nothing would be his fare if everyone could on Christmas have new clothes to wear. So maybe you'll have a heart and give help to the weak and small, for numerous needy children get nothing at all. And searching for those who suffer from shortage of light for true, may perhaps to make your Christmas merry too. Good day again. So the Christmas cat. And all these drawings, by the way, are made by Alex Storer, who uh, was so gracious to make us these drawings a couple of years back. So Alex Storer, you can check him out by the Arctic Lights. Uh, sorry. Hi. <laughs> And, uh, and, uh, but here I have, but here I have a guide by, by your friend in Reykjavik called Einar. And he's going to tell us a little bit about the Christmas book. No, Stefan, sorry. <laughs> Stefan, uh, yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm a little bit messed up here, yeah, but nice, but nice uh, blue uh, Christmas hat. Uh, sorry, I'm going to, I'm going to pass you the mic here. So we have it in the middle. Sorry, I was. To be absolutely fair, then uh, me and Einar, we actually look quite a bit alike, yeah, so yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, because I had uh, I had arranged uh, so yeah, sorry, sorry, Stefan. Had no really problem at all. But Stefan, you do all kinds of tours for us, and uh, so let's, uh, let's, let's back here and have the Christmas hat here in the, in the background, and go a little bit back here, and then we have perfect shots over here. So how are you guys? Hello! And welcome to the uh, fantastic Julefest here in Reykjavik. I want to tell you a little bit about our um, Jule beers. Because um, not many of you know that beer was actually illegal in Iceland until the 1st of March 1989. But we, the Icelandic, we do everything absolutely to the max. And when we legalized beer, <coughs> we won the awards for the best beers in the world. <laughs> of course. And for the Julefest, we always make different kinds of beers for the Julefest. We make a different beer for every single Julelat. And uh, not many people actually know that there are more than 13 Julelats. So we make quite a lot of beer. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think uh, the number was over 100 for the last thing, uh, uh, last I checked. Do you have a favorite? Yeah, I'm actually a big fan of Hurdaskettlir, the big double it's basically a stout porter. It, they call it a, a, a porter, but yeah, it's a, it's a very strong 11.5% uh, door, right. door slammer. Door slammer, yeah, he's the one slamming the doors for some reason. My favorite is Skiriarmur. He is a, um, how do you say it, a little twist of the famous Skirgaumur, which is quite interesting. Skiriarmur is a sour beer, absolutely delicious, with blueberries and uh, some cinnamon. Absolutely recommend it. Skiddy, I have to check it out. Definitely do. 
Now, if you come to Iceland during the Yule Fest, I absolutely recommend that you try out our Yule beers because, trust me, they are very, very, very good, all of them. Yeah, thank you, Chris Stefan. Uh, any last thoughts? Any do you want to say any Yola Kvedjur or? I know, I know you're quite a singer. Do you do you, do you, have, a, <laughs> do you have a famous Christmas song? Mm. Or do you want to sing a darker song? Or what, what, what is no, I mean, <laughs> don't we all have the favorite song, which is Snjokort Fatla? Okay, nice. You want to sing it with me? <laughs> I'll, I'll try. Snjokort Fatla. Awasto Atla Börnin leika og skemmta sér Nú er ástíð kærleikar og fríðar Komið er að jóla stund Everybody loves that song but yeah obviously we are not quite sure about the lyrics but thank you Stefan thank you so much for Gleðileg jól Gleðileg jól Thank you So yeah. Uh. Yeah, Paki, wood, wood, Alex, store. And there you see, Aska Slicker came to be the quilt. Ash Slicker. Ash. <laughs> Ash Slicker. <laughs> yeah, same joke. Doesn't get worse any every year. But yeah, um, bowl liquor. Goes <laughs> to town tonight. Bowl liquor, Ash Slicker, yes. All right. Yes, Pat, there's a requirement of uh, being able to sing to work for us. That's uh, kind of like a, a thing that we tried to put into, into, our, our, into our experiences. <laughs> no, no, it's, uh, it's nice. It's a nice, have, nice thing to have, but uh, not a requirement. One of my favorite bookstores here in Iceland called Ben in Eimundsson. And uh, here we have a lot of Nice Christmas books, and I'm not. I'm just gonna get a peek. I'm not gonna take the chance of. But here you can see a nice Christmas collection, uh, uh, Christmas books uh, by the Yule Lads, by Brian Pilkington, and uh, we'll post some of these, uh, some of these uh, books later. Yeah, we were, we had arrived on, uh, on the bowl liquor on the 17th, and now we have Hurdaskedlir on the 18th, Hurdaskedlir, the door slammer, and yeah, he uh, doesn't have any doors on his on his uh, in the cave, so uh, he he is fond of slamming the doors of houses everywhere. Who did that get lit? Then we have on the 19th, Skirgamur. You heard Stefan earlier talk about Skirgamur or Skirjarmur, which is a beer. Sour beer, Christmas beer, he was fond of stealing the skier from the farms, of course. And here usually we have some nice displays of, of Reykjavik from Christmas past.
And here is the famous Oslo tree, or Tree of Oslo. Uh, there was a tradition from, uh, I think it was 1951, where the city, our, our friends, friends from Oslo, Norway, gave us a tree every year. A big tree to celebrate Christmas to put here in, in Reykjavik uh, because the Oslo and Reykjavik were uh, 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 friendly cities. <laughs> and uh, but uh, back in about seven years ago, we stopped uh, importing trees from from Norway to have us the Oslo tree and started using our our big trees that we are already growing here to save like uh, minimize the carbon footprint. But still, the Oslo pays for the tree, but uh, we stopped importing the tree. So there's a tradition of lighting this tree and, uh, you know, singing some carols and a uh, uh, nice tradition of, uh, you know, when it, this is uh, lit up and uh, everybody comes together. And of course, the Icelandic parliament there in the background. And then we have the Domkirke, the cathedral, the uh, Reykjavik cathedral over here. Uh, so there's a tradition of Hringja in Jólin, or ringing in Christmas. So every year, every 24th of December, because we celebrate our Christmas on the 24th of December, everybody, or a lot of people, turn on the radio and they listen to the bells from the cathedral ring in Christmas. And uh, they ring, of course, six times and then you can sit down and have Christmas dinner. So the bells of, of Christmas. Jóla Bjöllurnar, Jóla. And we are here in Östurvöllur, a famous spot for when we, uh, when it's a little bit warmer here, we gather here and, and drink. This is uh, a nice public space where people sometimes have a small picnic here in the on the on the grass and and so forth. Hi Susan. Uh, Susan has two Christmas books from Iceland, the Yule Cat and the Fortnight Before Christmas. Puts them under the tree every year. That's a nice tradition of, of bringing them. Uh, me and my boys, I have uh, two boys, five and eight, and uh, there's a really nice Christmas tradition of, of uh, picking up these, these books, Christmas books, before, uh, yeah, before Christmas, and look at the, the Icelandic Yulats, the drawings, and, uh, and of course, putting the shoe in the windowsill and, and so forth and so forth. So on the 20th of December we have Bjuknakrakir, Sausage Swiper. Sausage Swiper. And uh, yeah, we, one of the tra traditions of, for Christmas was um, hanging up these sausages and smoking them and uh, of course sausage swiper was stealing the sausages. Bjukna Kreikir. On the 21st of December we have Glukkageir, window peeper. Yeah, the pervert of the group. But, <laughs> but uh, he was more just like uh, curious. He was like a, a curious fellow. He really enjoyed uh, and here we have Windbudin, the state-run alcohol stores, and, and usually they have like a selection of uh, these Icelandic Christmas beers in the back. Uh, not sure if we can see some of it over here. Yeah, there's a little bit up there in the back, but uh, but yeah.
Then on the 22nd of December we have Gautathevr, Doorway Sniffer. Yeah, he had a great big nose and really, really uh, enjoyed the smell of Christmas. On the 23rd of December we have Kjetrokut Omituk. I'm curious, is the cat over here somewhere? Yeah, we are here by Kilti Kötterin because on our Reykjavik catwalk we usually say hi to a couple of famous cats here. And one of them, Baktus, is a frequent guest of, of this whole shop. Yeah, it's a bit wet and cold. I have to be honest, I'm a little bit my fingers are stopped working. And on the 24th of December, the last one, Kerta Sneaker or Candle Stealer, Candle Beggar. Really enjoyed his candles. And they were made out of tallow back in the day. Tallow, which was an edible, you know, basically fat, animal fat. And so he enjoyed snacking on the on the tallow. On the, Cindy, yeah, sometimes <laughs> the kids get can get scared of the scared of the Icelandic lads, but uh, but they have mellowed a lot, mellowed a lot in the over the years. Da 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 da. And finally, we have the Icelandic skating rink that we have uh, uh, it's put up here every year now and has been for, for quite, quite a couple of years, quite some years. I'm not sure when the tradition started, actually. Yes, rest in peace. Dirty old town. Ah, uh, yeah, I would like a really warm cocoa or coffee or something good. I had early already talked about Lepaluli, the lazy husband. He was in the window earlier. The lazy husband of Grilla, the troll. Uh, the stepfather of the Icelandic Yulads. And then finally we have the Grilla, the ogress. That likes children's soup. So she would have a field day here, but she only likes naughty children. So uh, the really naughty children of Iceland, they get scared by the fact that uh, Grilla uh, likes children's soup. So uh, if the children of Iceland are naughty, they are threatened with some, uh, that Grilla is gonna take her, take them and put them, put her in the, in her bag and, and eat them. So that's like, a, if Grilla hear you there, Grilla hears you. So yeah, nice way of Icelandic Christmas traditions of scaring the children. Hi Becky, thank you. Hi Christine. Here is about zero Celsius, but but feels a bit colder. But yeah, I'm signing off. Liquor is liquor. The liquor is lover. Valor, your friend Reykjavik. It's been a roughly an hour of a 
introducing uh, some of the Icelandic Christmas tradi traditions. I know I'm forgetting probably some stuff, but uh, this is the fourth year running. We started this 2020. We've been doing this every year since then for some reason. And uh, I hope you have enjoyed getting a little peek into our Christmas traditions of Iceland. And uh, remember, if you come to Iceland or if you know a friend that's coming to Iceland, then maybe think of your friend in Reykjavik. And if you sign up for our newsletter or, or, or our community, mail community, then we'll send you a gift on the 24th of December. Thank you, John, and thank you, Ken and Peggy. And uh, Merry Christmas, Gleðil Jól. And uh, I hope you sincerely enjoy this Christmas and take it easy. I know I will try my best and, uh, and uh, see you soon. Cheerio. Bye.